Riviette Druzy, Wes O'Donnell here, veteran of the U.S. Army and the U.S. Air Force. And today we're talking about Ukraine receiving a huge new shipment of javelins. But first, it would be really awesome if you subscribe to this channel so I can keep bringing you your AI-free military analysis right here on YouTube. Okay, let's jump in. Rightfully nicknamed the Protector of Ukraine and St. Javelin for its outsized role in defending the country, the FGM-148 Javelin is one of the most lethal tank killers in the world. Now the Department of Defense has just signed a $1.3 billion follow-on contract for more Javelin portable anti-tank missiles to replenish U.S. stockpiles and send more to Ukraine and Taiwan. This represents the largest single-year Javelin contract for manufacturers Raytheon and Lockheed Martin. The $1.3 billion follow-on is in addition to last year's massive deal worth up to $7.2 billion. That's a lot of Javelins. At roughly $240,000 per missile, that comes out to carry the one 35,000 missiles. The launchers were not included in my back of the napkin calculation. To date, Ukraine has already received over 10,000 Javelin missiles from the US. This is why I once wrote that the biggest winners of the Ukraine war will be American defense contractors. Seriously, these CEOs are likely swimming in their Scrooge McDuck sized money vaults filled with taxpayer dollars. Still, let's take a closer look at the Javelin and see why it's performed so well in Ukraine and why sending Ukraine more will make life as a Russian tank commander short and pointless. First designed under DARPA's tank breaker program in the roaring 1980s, the Javelin was meant to be a replacement anti-armor system for the U.S. Army's underperforming M47 Dragon anti-tank missile system. The Javelin was eventually put into service in 1996, but didn't actually see its combat debut until the U.S. invasion of Iraq in 2003. During the Battle of Debeka Pass, a platoon of U.S. Army Special Forces soldiers equipped with javelins destroyed two T-55 tanks, eight armored personnel carriers, and four troop transport trucks. During the war in Afghanistan, the javelin was used effectively in counterinsurgency operations. Initially, soldiers perceived the weapon as unsuitable for counterinsurgency due to its destructive power. After all, the system was designed as a tank breaker, and terrorists didn't have many of those. But highly skilled gunners were able to make precision shots against enemy positions with little collateral damage. U.S. troops in Afghanistan discovered that if enemy forces were inside of a cave, a javelin fired into the mouth of the cave would destroy it from the inside which was not possible from the outside using heavy mortars. Also, the psychological effect of the sound of a javelin firing sometimes caused insurgents to disengage and flee their position. Even when not firing, the javelin's launcher was commonly used as a manned portable surveillance system. Back in Ukraine, the AFU has likely destroyed more Russian tanks with the Javelin in combat than the U.S. has. In fact, I feel confident in saying that Ukrainian soldiers now have more experience using the weapon in actual combat than the U.S. Army and the U.S. Marine Corps combined. Now, this is largely because the U.S. hasn't been involved in a lot of close combat anti-tank warfare since the weapon's debut. With Air superiority, there was never a need for U.S. infantry to get that close to Iraq's Russian-made tanks. So why is the Javelin so lethal in Ukraine? Well, the weapon is being used in the exact environment and against the exact targets it was designed for. The Javelin warhead is a tandem high-explosive anti-tank heat. Essentially, the round uses an explosive-shaped charge to create a stream of molten deformed metal. The result is a narrow, high-velocity particle stream that can penetrate Russian armor. The warhead can also defeat explosive reactive armor. These are typically seen as boxes over top a tank's main armor 
that explodes outward to disrupt the path of a heat rounds and narrow particle stream. But the Javelin warhead is tandem, meaning it uses two shaped charges. The precursor charge is weaker and smaller, meant to detonate the uh, explosive reactive armor, which clears the path for the much larger second heat penetrator in a sort of one-two punch. Now this might be overkill against the Russian armor currently in Ukraine. The Russian Ministry of Defense itself has admitted that it was highly likely that many Russian tank crews lack the training to maintain explosive reactive armor, resulting in either the poor fitting of ERA or it being left off the Russian tank completely. The Javelin missile is known as fire and forget. Once the gunner has a lock on a target and fires, the seeker stays focused on the target's image and changes its flight path as the target moves. This means the gunner can fire and take cover immediately, greatly improving their survivability. In a typical infantry fire team, like the one I served in, a four-person team is made up of a team leader armed with an M4, a grenade rifleman armed with a rifle and an M203 grenade launcher or the newer M320 grenade launcher mounted to the weapon, uh, an automatic rifleman armed with the M249 squad automatic weapon, and either the squad anti-armor specialist armed with an FGM-148 javelin or the squad designated marksman who carries an M4 carbine and M14 rifle. Within the first six months of the Ukraine war, the Pentagon tracked the performance of the Javelin against Russian armor. They claimed that of the first 112 Javelins fired by the Ukrainians, 100 missiles had hit their target. In January of this year, a Ukrainian paratrooper used a Javelin to take out four Russian armored vehicles in a single battle. The soldier, identified as Andriy, was part of the country's 79th separate airborne assault brigade. In 2023, that same soldier destroyed three Russian tanks and five of Moscow's BMP infantry fighting vehicles in a single attack. According to Newsweek, another soldier in the 79th used javelins to take out nearly 40 units of Russian equipment. This combat effectiveness is likely why the javelin has become a mythic symbol of defiance in Ukraine, spawning the now viral image dubbed Saint Javelin which shows the Virgin Mary holding a javelin launcher in the style of an Eastern Orthodox church painting. In fact, a website called St. Javelin is now being used to raise funds for Ukraine by selling clothes, flags, and stickers with the icon. But the big question for now is how many new javelins will Ukraine receive as part of the Pentagon's massive $1.3 billion follow-on contract? This is a little murky because the contract is designed to replenish U.S. stockpiles, provide aid for Ukraine, and bolster Taiwan's defense against potential Chinese landing craft. But at approximately $240,000 per missile, that's the export price, this could potentially mean thousands of new missiles for Ukraine before the end of the year. I was never a squad anti-armor specialist, so I never fired the javelin outside of training, I was a grenadier and an automatic rifleman at various points, but I envy those Ukrainian soldiers who are popping Russian armor on the daily with this ingenious little weapon system. Without the javelin, the front lines might be closer to Kyiv than they are today. Russia would certainly have more armor on the battlefield than they do today. Let's get Ukraine more so they can keep the pressure on the invaders. That's it. Glory to Ukraine. Glory to the heroes. Slava Ukraini.